Okay, we're ready to tackle our last couple of topics in the course, really. Um, exponential and logarithmic functions. So we're going to start uh, in this uh, video and talk about the exponential functions. Now, before we describe these functions, we do have to deal with a little bit of a issue. And so, um, let's talk about it. So we know what it means to, to take 2, for instance, to the third power. Right, 2 cubed. So it means to multiply 2 by itself 3 times, which of course is 8. We even know what it means to take uh, 2 to uh, fractional powers. Like 2 to the 1 third, this is the cube root of 2. I don't know if you see that little index in there, 3. Right, the cube root of 2. Um, we even know what it means to take 2 to negative powers, like 2 to the negative 1 is um, 1 divided by 2 to the first power. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 divided by 2 squared, which is 1 fourth, and so on. Um, even to the 0 power, what's 2 to the 0 power? Well, that's just 1. Right? So we, if we have any um, rational number, even fractional, um, we know how to deal with it. But what does it mean to take 2 to, say, the pi power? And pi is a, an irrational number. Which means if I were to write out its decimal expansion, um, there is it would not terminate; it would go on forever, and there's no repeating pattern. So, like one third, one third has a repeating pattern; it goes on forever, but it's just point three 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 forever, right? And that's true for any rational number. So, what do I do with an irrational number? Because I can't write that as a fraction. Um, so what we're going to do is actually uh, approach, if you will, 2 to the pi. And, and I've showed it down here, but let me just illustrate this in, in the calculator. Um, okay, so... If I take, uh, first of all, if I just start at 3, we know what 2 to the third power is, right? I'll do that in the calculator here. And um, and we get 8. Let's see if I can get my screen to show up a little bit better in this. Some shadow on there. Let's see if I can change, give me a second, see if I can change the settings on this camera. this maybe hopefully okay at least I can see it better um, so there's 2 to the third power now when we when we go to uh, one decimal place accuracy 2 to the 3.1 so I'm just going to keep on adding on another digit so what does it mean to take 2 to the 3.1 power so 3.1 power right that's the same as 31 tenths, right? So that's a rational number. So I can write that as a fraction. All right, 31 tenths. Now, what does it mean to take 2 to the 31 tenths power? Well, that means take 2 to the 31st power and then take the tenth root of that. Now, if I'm going to take 2 to the 31st power, that's an awful big number. That's 2 times itself 31 times. Okay, um, and then after that, I've got to figure out the number, uh, the tenth root of that huge number, which means I need to find the number that if I multiply it by itself ten times, I get that huge number. Okay, now the process of doing that without a calculator would be daunting, we know, but at least we understand the process. We, we know what it's going to be, so we understand what it means to say 2 to the 3.1 power. Now, um, I can do that on the calculator, right? It has an algorithm that will approximate this. So if I take 2 and raise it to the 3.1 power, it's going to basically have an algorithm that's going to estimate that value. It's going to essentially, you know, essentially we're getting a number again that is 2 to the 31st power and then the 10th root of that huge number. Okay. And there it is. Right. So this is the tenth root of 
2 to the 31st power. Okay. Um, and, and, I've, and I've got that here. Right. Let me do one more, right? Now I can go to two decimal places, 2 to the 3.1, 3.14 power. And 3.14 is 314 divided by 100, right? Just to make sure you, you can agree with that, right? 3, 314 divided by 100 is 3. 0.14. So now if I take 2 and raise it to 3.14 power, what does that mean? Um, it means take the 100, uh, sorry, take 2 to the 314th power and then take the 100th root of that big number. So I mean that's mind-boggling for us to try and you know do that without a calculator, but at least we understand the process again. Okay, so we're going to take 2, multiply itself 314 times, huge number, take that huge number, figure out what number do I multiply by itself 100 times to get that number. Well, the calculator approximate it that way. Okay, we'll see, what I'm going to continue to do then is just add on more digits of pi to this exponent. And each time I do that, I get a rational number that I can interpret in terms of this process. Right? And so as we do that, look what's happening as we get closer and closer to 2 to the pi as we add more and more digits. Right? The accuracy of what we end up with, which um, 2 to the pi accurate to um, 7 decimal places is this number here. Right? And you can see as we move along that um, more and more digits uh, of 2 to the pi are obtained as we move down this list here. Right. So, so accurate now, right? Um, by the time we get to 2 to the 3.141592 we're accurate to 2 to the pi, 5 decimal place accuracy, basically, right? Um, but this is the idea. When we're taking a base and raising it to an irrational power, this is essentially what we mean. There's this process. So it's a pretty complicated process. We don't think about it, right? Because we are in the day and age of <laughs> technology. We can certainly uh, appreciate that. But, you know, Someone's got to program these calculators to do this sort of thing. So when you take 2 and raise it to the pi power, right, we have a pi key. Of course, the calculator's got a, an approximation for pi. This is not an exact value. But um, we, we can get this approximation here for 2 to the pi. Okay? So, so this process is not something we have to go through every time when we're trying to find 2 uh, to an irrational number like pi. What I just want to say now is that we can uh, take any base, say 2, and raise it to any power that is a real number. We can now raise it to any real number power. Okay, so if you, if this made some sense, great. If, if it made, hopefully it made a little sense, okay? If you didn't fully follow everything here, that's okay. But again, the, the bottom line is we can take 2 and raise it to any real number exponent. Um, and so with that, very important here is the definition of the exponential function. Um, okay, so we're going to start with the base of the exponential function. The base is A. It's, it's going to be a number that's greater than 0 but not equal to 1. So like 2, in the previous example, we had 2 as our base. And, and then the exponential function with base A is defined this way. And notice the variable input x goes into the exponent. Right, so we're going to input the exponent. Um, and you can see why we, we, we would want it to, first of all, be positive. If A were like negative 2, um, I would have some problems. Namely, when I plug in x equal a half, for instance, remember what it means to the one-half power? That's the square root. 
And if I take the square root of a negative number, that's not a real number. So that, so that would give problems uh, using a base that is negative. Um, so I want it to be positive. I, and we don't want it to be 1. Of course, if I have a base of 1, 1 raised to any power is always 1. 1 squared is 1. 1 cubed is 1. 1, this, one to the 1 half power is going to be 1. 1 to the pi would be 1. And so we that that function would just be the the horizontal line y equal one would just be a linear function. So with that restriction, what do we have? The domain uh, of this function is all real numbers. Okay, the domain is all real numbers, and basically the discussion we just had a minute ago allows us to say that right that we can take a and raise it to any power, even not just rational numbers but irrational numbers as well. Now the range is going to be everything what greater than zero, okay, and and that's because we choose the base to be some positive number, right? Uh, and when you take a base and raise that's a positive number, right, then the output will always be positive. You cannot get zero. You can't raise a to any number and get zero. Remember, a to the zero power is equal to one, um, and we're not going to get any negative numbers. A to the negative 1 is not a negative one number, right? A raised to the negative 1 power is 1 divided by A. It's just a reciprocal. A being positive, 1 divided by A is still positive. So the range is all real numbers greater than 0. Now, the exponential functions we'll see will have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So we talked about horizontal asymptotes with the rational functions. So there's a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And it, it only approaches this horizontal asymptote as x goes gets more and more negative. Uh, and, you know, go, approaches negative infinity, we'll say. Then, then the function will approach 0. And we'll see that with the graphs. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. It depends on whether a is... Um, I, I, let me just nix that. <laughs> if a is between... 0 and 1, then, then we actually approach the horizontal asymptote as x goes to positive infinity. I'm sorry, I misspoke with that. Now the y-intercept is 0, 1, and that's obvious because for any base a, if I plug in 0 into function, a to the 0 power is always equal to 1 for a not equal to 0. And so that gives me my y-intercept, always for all these functions. Now, if a is greater than 1, then the graph of this function is going to be increasing. If a is between 0 and 1, then the graph of this function is going to be decreasing. Uh, also, our function f of x equal a x is 1 to 1, if you remember from inverse functions. That's why I just talked about inverse functions. It's 1 to 1, and hence it has an inverse. And we're going to talk more about that when we talk about the logarithmic functions. Okay. It is essential for you to understand these facts. You need to know these facts about the exponential function. Okay, let's look at some examples. We'll start with the function f of x equal 2 to the x. And let's look at its graph. I'm going to plug in some representative values from the domain and just see what we have here. So I'm going to plug in um, f of negative 2 is going to be 2 to the negative 2 power, right, which is 1 divided by 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. I should have drew a bigger box there to put my work in, right? 2, what, x is negative 1 is what? 1 half. 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 squared is 4. And so here we have right, input negative 2, output 1 fourth. So inputs go along the horizontal axis when x is negative 2. The output y is 1 fourth. So this is 1, this is a half, here is 1 fourth. Negative 2 comma 1 fourth is right there. Negative 1 comma a half. Negative 1 comma 1 half is there. 0 comma 1. 1 comma 2, 
and 2 comma 4. All right, and we can plot more more function uh, more points rather in this uh, graph, but we kind of see the trend, and this is what the graph is going to look like. Okay, so it you know very begins to very rapidly increase. I mean, if we go to three, we're going to be at eight. So eight is going to be way up here, right? So we're going to quickly move upward rapidly. But do you see uh, that all the facts that we talked about are true, right? The domain was all real numbers. Um, okay. The range is everything greater than zero. So the graph of this function is always above the x-axis. And we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. And we do approach it in this case as x goes to minus infinity. We're getting closer and closer to this, right? If you think about it, if I plug in negative three, I'm going to get one eighth. I plug in negative 4, I'm going to get 1 16th, and so on. They're always positive, but getting closer and closer to 0. And, of course, we have our y-intercept of 0, 1. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at... another exponential function. This time I want my base to be 1 half. Base to be 1 half. So... What does it mean to take one half to the negative two power? Okay, well, just remember rule of exponents, right? When we have negative powers, it's the reciprocal. So if I have a divided by b to the negative n power, that's the same as b over a to the positive n power. The negative exponent means reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. This is just 2 squared, which of course is 4. 1 half to the negative 1 power is just 2. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. 1 half to the 0 power is 1. 1 half to the first power is a half. And 1 half squared is 1 fourth. These numbers seem familiar, outputs from what we just did, There's, um, but let's plot these now. Input negative 2, output 4. Input negative 1, output 2. Input 0, output 1. Input 1, output a half. Input 2, output 1 fourth. Okay. And so now we have a graph that looks like this. Okay. Again, the, the domain's all real numbers. The range is everything greater than zero. Uh, and notice we have y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote. This time we approach it as x goes to positive infinity. And we still have that same y uh, intercept. Notice the thing that we talked about with um, the graph increasing, right? If the value of a is greater than 1, so that's like you know the case where a is 2, that's greater than 1, we're increasing. If a is between 0 and 1, right, the graph is decreasing. Now there certainly is a relationship between the graphs of these two functions. This is 2 to the x over here, 1 half to the x. Do you, can you say what the relationship is? The graph of 1 half to the x is what? What do we do to the graph of 2 to the x to get here? It's a reflection in what axis? A reflection in the y axis. Do you see that? So that's what we see graphically. Um, so the graph of the function g of x is a reflection in y-axis of graph of function f of x.
And, you know, we can see this also algebraically, if you remember, how do we do a reflection in the y-axis for a function? Do you remember how we do that? How do I reflect the graph f about the y-axis? I replace x with what? Negative x. Remember this? This is how you do a reflection in the uh, y-axis. So what is f of negative x? f of x is 2 to the x, so this becomes 2 to the negative x. Well, 2 to the negative x is the same as 1 divided by 2 to the positive x. Remember, the negative exponent means reciprocal. But this is the same, right, as 1 half to the x power, because 1, 1 to the x is just 1. And this is the function g of x. So f of negative x is equal to g of x. Reflect f in the y-axis and you get the function g of x. And vice versa, by the way, right? So they're related. Okay. So now that we know this uh, exponential functions, uh, and we can you know, look at other bases here, um, but um, let's look at moving these around. What do we do with them? We can shift them left, right, up, down, we can do reflections like we did here in the y-axis and the x-axis, or about the um, origin. We can also do vertical stretches and so on. Okay. So in this case, we're going to describe how the following graphs can be obtained from the graph of y equal 2 to the x. And then we're going to give the domain range horizontal asymptote and y-intercept. Okay. So. Here's our function y equal to 2 to the x. How was this function obtained from 2 to the x? What did we do? Remember what this is? We shifted up what? 4 units. Up 4 units. Okay. So remember how we can get these info the remember the facts about exponential functions. The domain was all real numbers. Okay, I can plug any value of x in. If I simply shift the output to the function up four units, is that going to affect the domain? No. The domain is still the same. Now the range, right, the set of outputs, if you remember right, was everything greater than zero, right? So these again are the facts we're using. The range was greater than zero for two to the x. But now every output has been shifted up four units. So if I shift every output up four units, what's our new range? It's now everything greater than four. Right? And, and, and we used to get, you know, if I plug in zero, for instance, for, for two, I get two to the zero. That, that's one. Add four, that's now five, right? So I've shifted everything up four units, including, uh, so the range is affected that way. Now what about our horizontal asymptote, right? That's that horizontal line. It was at y equals zero, right? It was at y equals zero. It's the x-axis. But if everything shifts up four units, that horizontal asymptote was also going to shift up four units. So it's going to go from y equals zero to y equal four. And what about our y-intercept? Remember it was zero comma one. We shift up four units, as we said, zero comma five. Okay. What about g of x? How was it obtained from the graph of two to the x? This was shifted where? Shifted three units where? Up, down, left, or right. You should say right. Shifted right three units. Do you remember? when we were doing transformations. Don't forget that, right? Shifted right three units. Now, how's the domain affected? Well, the domain's all real numbers. Shifting left or right a finite number of units is not going to affect the domain. It's still all real numbers. How about the range? Well, the outputs haven't been affected. We've only shifted the graph horizontally. And so the range is still everything greater than zero. A horizontal asymptote? That's still the same. It's still y equals zero. We've done a horizontal shift, right? We haven't moved up or down. Now the y-intercept is going to change. Um, and probably the best way to, to determine that is to just simply plug in 
0 into the function, right? Anytime I want to find the y-intercept, I let x be 0. And in this function, I get x is 0, I get 2 to the negative 3 power, which is 1 divided by 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. And so my y-intercept is 0, 1 eighth. Okay. Now, there is a special number I would like to introduce you to, and it's called the number E, sometimes called the natural base. Now, some of you have maybe heard of this natural base, but it's sort of like the number pi. It's irrational. It can't be written as a fraction. And one way to define it is looking at this expression here as n goes to infinity. This is an interesting expression because um, the base, right, is as n gets bigger and bigger, this fraction 1 divided by n is getting closer and closer to 0. So the base is trying to get to 1. Right? The base is trying to, to approach 1. And 1 to any power is 1. Okay. So the, so, so the base is trying to make this, this expression equal to 1. But, but for any value of n, you're really not 1. You're always a little bit bigger than 1. And if you have a number bigger than 1 going to n, which is getting bigger and bigger, 1 to a bigger and bigger exponent, right? That's, that's going to bigger and bigger. That's going to infinity. So the exponent's trying to make this thing go to infinity. The, the base is trying to make it go to 1. And it's interesting interaction between these two, the base and the exponent. Turns out, though, that this expression is get, gets closer and closer to a fixed number. Okay, in other words, there's a horizontal asymptote, if you will, for, for this function as a function of n. And this is the value uh, accurate to, to um, whatever I've got there, nine, nine decimal places. This is number e. It's, it's uh, 2.71828, uh, about, it's, it's um, obviously between 2 and 3. And so it's very much like pi, but it's an important number as we'll see here momentarily or uh, in the coming lessons. So the natural exponential function um, is e to the x. And so we use this function quite a bit. It's the natural exponential function. And here's the graph of it. And, and notice that it's um, increasing because the value of a, e, is greater than 1. Uh, I just want to show you in comparison... Um, the graph of 2 to the x. Now remember that graph, if, if I were to graph 2 to the x, 2 to the uh, 0 power is 1, 2 to the 1st power is 2, 2 squared is what? 4. And then 2 to the negative 1 is a half, which is a little bit above here. Uh, and 2 to the negative 2 powers of 1 fourth, which is a little bit above here as well. And so, if I were to graph 2 to the x in comparison, here's what it looks like. And notice for values of x greater than 0, 2 to the x is, is, is smaller, has a lower value than e to the x. It's below the graph. But for values of x less than 0, 2 to the x is uh, graph is above e to the x. I want to also graph 3 to the x. What about 3 to the x? 3 to the 0 power is 1. What's 3 to the first power? If I plug in x equal 1, 3 to the first power is 3. Uh, 3 squared is what? Going to be 9. So let's see, here's 7, 8, 9, somewhere up there maybe. Um, 3 to the negative 1 power is uh, negative one, uh, sorry, three to the negative one power is one third, not negative one third, but one third, which is going to be a little bit actually below, and 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 so on. So what we're going to see here is if I look at the graph, not a very good job there. Sorry, three to the x gets this. So. So if 3 to the x for values greater than x is greater than e to the x, but 
but it's actually less than e to the x for values that are negative. But you see that e to the x graph is trapped in between the two, and that makes sense since the base e is about 2.7, right? It kind of makes sense that it's kind of closer to 3 to the x than 2 to the x because it's 2.7 is closer to uh, 3 than 2. But that's, that's how these graphs look. So all the exponential functions where the base is greater than 1 will look like this. They'll all pass to that same y-intercept. And as the base gets bigger, this, for values greater than x, right, it gets, it gets steeper. So it's, it, gets, it goes to infinity faster. All right, let's just uh, do the same thing now with some other transformations of this new function. e to the x, again, is just another exponential function. Um, we're going to take the graph of e to the x that we sketched up here, uh, and we're going to transform it and then give the domain range horizontal aspect and y-intercept. What's this do here? How was f of x obtained from y equal e to the x? When we multiply the output by negative 1, what do we do? This is a reflection in what axis? What axis did we just reflect in? It's a reflection in the x-axis, right? Because we change the sign of the output, which is the y value. All right, the domain was all real numbers. If I reflect about the x-axis, that does not affect the domain. It's still all real numbers. But is the range affected? Oh, yeah. The range was what? Everything greater than 0. By reflecting about the x-axis, what happens to the graph, right? Here's the graph of e to the x, right? If I reflect it in the x-axis, it's going to go like this now, right? All the outputs are what? Below the x-axis. All the outputs are negative. And you can see that, right, where we're multiplying uh, by a negative 1 here, making them all negative. So the range used to be everything greater than 0. Now it's, what, everything less than 0. The horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0, right? So here's the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. The graph is now looking like this, but it's still approaching that horizontal asymptote just from below this time as x goes to minus infinity. And what's the y-intercept? It was 0, 1. Now it's what? 0, negative 1. What about g of x? Well, this is a graph of e to the, e to the x, and we obtain it by a reflection in what axis this time? y-axis. Because I'm changing x with negative x. I'm changing the sign of x. So if I do a reflection in the uh, y-axis, here's the graph of e to the x. And then it's going to look like this, right, coming down this way. Domain is unaffected. The range is unaffected. It's still above the y, uh, x-axis, rather. Horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0. Now, instead of approaching the horizontal asymptote as x gets more and more negative, as so x goes to minus infinity, we're now approaching 0 as x goes to positive infinity, right? And what's, what about the y-intercept? Well, we reflect about the y-axis, that point doesn't change, so it's unchanged. So all the, everything is unchanged, the only thing that's different is now the function's decreasing as opposed to increasing. Okay, so there we have sort of an introduction to uh, exponential functions. What we want to look in the next video is at uh, an application um, of the exponential functions and we're going to look at um, uh, some banking problems, if you will, or investment problems. We're going to talk about interest, and in particular, compound interest.